Good morning, everybody. Lee Brower here, and welcome to this week's edition of Meaningful Monday. I am grateful to be here, and I am glad to be here. What would happen if we went along with the way our brain works and not against it? There's so much studies that are out there today about how the brain works. That why aren't we using it to help us grow, to help us progress, to have better behavior, and consequently, better futures? How often do we use threats and warnings to motivate? We even do it with ourselves. But how about our children? How about in the workplace? How about on social media? How about in social causes or health campaigns? Think about the don't or think about the quit smoking campaigns. I watch those and I think, how could anybody smoke after watching one of those? But the science shows that the warnings have very limited impact on behavior. Those graphic images, you would think, but after looking at those images, quitting actually became a lower priority for smokers. If you induce fear in an animal, threat, come at it. They either flee or freeze most of the time. <laughs> but same with humans. We tend to shut down. We try to eliminate the negative feelings. And we use things like rationalization. Best definition of rationalization that I know of is lowering your standards down to your level of behavior. Rationalization is lowering your standards down to your level of behavior. You know, my grandpa smoked till he was 90, or I have really good genes. But we rationalize in every aspect of our lives, and usually it's around some sort of behavior that if we would start making better choices around that behavior, we would have an even better future. Or we just stick our heads in the sand. One or the other. A study was done on the stock market. I find this interesting. How many times people look at their account when the stock market's going up versus when it's going down? When the stock market's going up, significantly more times are people looking at their account. As it's going down, the people that the number of times you look at it drops. Why? Because they want the good feelings. They don't want the negative feelings. They want the good feelings. They're motivated by that until the market crashes, but then it's too late, like it did in 2008. They had warnings, but that stock market is not the only thing. It's not just the stock market. We have warning signs on bad behavior. The things that we're doing or the things that we're not doing. The things that we could do better or even better. With those things which could potentially lead to bad outcomes later. If I don't take care of my health now, if I don't do this now, if I don't have this now, I'm going to have a bad outcome later. But it doesn't necessarily have to be that. There are different routes to our future. And we can choose. You know, there was a study done about where workers were, how many times workers in the hospital washed their hands. And they had cameras up. And even though they had cameras up, only 10% of the time did workers wash their hands. Once they put up a bulletin board that showed immediately, gave them immediate feedback, that washing their hands added this much to the percentage so they could see the percentage rise and it gave them a total for their whole staff. So they saw that they were imp impacting the whole staff. When they watch that, boom, 90%. 90%. So instead of warnings or instead of threats, three things we're going to talk about. Three things. If you can remember these three things and then start to think about it. That's what I'm doing. Going through, how can I apply this to me, my family, my business, where I'm in, in all areas of my life, I think there's a place for this if we just pay attention. First of all, look at that study of hand washing, social incentive. Social incentive motivates. I bet you can think of a lot of different ways. There was a study in Britain where they sent out a letter to everybody that had forgot to pay their taxes, right? And it just said, you know, I had a big, lengthy letter, all the penalties, everything that could go wrong, and it was basically ignored. They added one sentence to it, just one sentence. And it increased compliance by 15%, 5.6 million pounds. What was the one sentence? Nine out of 10 people pay their taxes on time. So highlighting other people is a strong incentive. So social incentive. Second one is immediate rewards. And immediate rewards come in different ways. For those workers, they immediately saw 
they got a shot that they were getting doing something up there that it made a difference. They were immediately got they immediately knew the outcome of what their choice was. And so if we can allow our workers to immediately know, now there's a great book, The Gap and the Gain. It's written by Dan Sullivan with Dr. Benjamin Hardy. I highly recommend it. And when you read about the gain, substitute the word gratitude and see if that doesn't give you an immediate reward. And think about how that might work in our motivation with others. So the third thing is then sense of control. It was up to the employee, it was up to those workers to wash their hands. Nobody else, you weren't threatening them, you weren't giving them fear, but they had a sense of control over their own destiny. So if we can give those three things, social incentive, immediate reward through grat gratitude or, you know, is a big part, grateful reward, sense of control. Then what we're doing is we're capitalizing on the human tendency to seek progress. You know, we may want to try these positive strategies, strategies rather than using threats. It's up to us. It's up to you. Have a meaningful week. I'll talk to you next week. Bye-bye.